I first noticed them when they were a knight and a princess. The knight errant had stayed in town where the princess hosted a tournament, a setup by her cruel uncle to marry her off to a commoner and take her late father's estate for himself. She had a plan, a poisoned goblet she'd give to her cruel uncle to stop him and the game when she called it to an end, to mourn her kin. The first round began and the knight entered a joust with another roaming adventurer, and the knight lost. A jousting rod square to his chest as he was distracted by the glistening blue and emerald eyes of the princess. And through his great advisor she too saw his. He fell to the floor with great injury, and his spine was horribly twisted. I was watching for the intrigue. Humans were known to me at the time, but knew, and I was observing the plot of marriage and murder between the noble family. I had enjoyed these cruel fates the humans brought upon themselves. But this moment struck me. I had learnt many things humans invented. Tools, flavour, gender, embarrassment, but this feeling... It was true love. It was strange and new, but it was clearly part of the universe, of myself. It was something of me, but manifested by people. The princess realised she must marry this knight, but he had lost the tournament. She ignored her plan and hastily ran to the medical quarters to find her true love. For him, he had entered not knowing how great the prize, the hand of his soulmate, and lost only because of the realization of how much he wanted and needed to win. The princess entered the tent where he had been carried by stretcher and urged the doctors to leave. She took off his helmet to find he was a woman. The two clasped each other in wordless agreement of how they felt. But the miserly old man entered, a goblet in his hand. He began to gloat about finding out about the poisonous plot. But he stopped. The two women held each other in a way beyond lust, beyond any love his shriveled heart had felt. They held each other and held a fear in their eyes that made it clear to him. Their souls are intertwined. There was to be no marriage between his niece and any knight. The estate should be in shambles before this was found out, and so he drew a crooked dagger from his waist and stabbed the princess in the back. He left the knight to stumble with its paralysis and fall into the pool of royal blood. The knight swore vengeance, and after healing, a year later, managed to sneak the same goblet that had sealed the fate of his true love into the uncle's dinner in his new palace. As the poison took effect, she entered the room. The uncle realized what had happened and cursed her. He said. The knight's spine never healed. But fighting an injured man with just a wicked dagger would be easy. Yet, she thought about what life she would have after. To kill for her true love was easy, and to die for her true love was easier. And imagining the empty life she'd have without love's purpose. She allowed herself to die on the moon blade as she impaled him in the chest. The two fell, their blood mixed, but none could tell the difference between royal and common blood. This story over a year was but a blip for me, but I soon noticed something strange. I saw the same thing happen again. In another galaxy that wasn't far from the humans, I observed a twin system. Stars, as you might not know, have souls. These two had the same souls as the knight and the princess. A bright yellow sun spun in an endless dance with a light blue neutron star. The music of the universe, the lights of nebulae behind them, and the bubbling of their surfaces were more romantic than I could have ever thought. They spun around each other for years, centuries, millennia, and they never got closer. 
They were scared to get close. They were scared to impact, to hurt the other. How beautiful could it have been if they touched? Eventually, it was easier to just wink out than face the fear of hurting the other. So again, I watched the same two souls die. This started a curiosity. This made me realize that neither the stars nor the night and princess were the first time these two souls had been reincarnated. I moved through time, sifting through souls and energies, and I saw the same thing over and over. In 2009, a trendy coffee shop had no more seats left, and an art student with bright green eyes had to sit next to a silver stem student learning engineering and they fell in love. But after mental illness and a medical condition caught up to them in 2015, neither could attend the other's funeral. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I saw an empty glass tumble to the ground when the milk it once carried had been consumed. I saw pebbles fall into canyons together and smash to avoid being separated. I saw a frog in a damaged ecosystem refuse to leave after the food had dried up because their partner had an injured leg and couldn't make the journey. And I won't mention the millions of humans I saw falling into the same pattern. What was I seeing? Was all love based on these two souls alone? Was there some kind of frequency to love that I'm misidentifying as a common soul? Was it some kind of pattern I thought was common personage? But no, it was the same two souls, the same two entities over and over again, reincarnating, birthing in alternate universes, not inhabiting those in love, but being one romance, split into a billion fractions. They were the same people born over and over and over again, and it hit me. This wasn't a quirk of the universe, but the strength of their love. They loved each other so purely, so strongly, with such impossible devotion, that they always found each other, no matter where they were born. Born as knights or frogs or stars or plankton, nothing would keep one from finding the other. But they would always fall into the same tragedy, to fight for one another, to die for one another, but always too weak to live for one another. That's why they had to say, In a million reincarnations, they would always find each other. One may be born in Seattle and the other in Brisbane, and somehow a cosmic coincidence would end up forcing their meeting. A solar flare changed a 1 to a 0 in a Nintendo 64 to ensure a Mario speedrun would be a little faster, so that someone would later win trivia about it and stand up at the podium to make eye contact with a pair of emerald eyes in the audience. There was always a flaw, though. It's so easy to die for someone. I watched it so many times. I saw knights bleed for their love. I saw trains switch tracks to wreck themselves to save another carriage. I saw a file corrupt itself so that its user won't paste it somewhere where it would erase their partner. I saw rescues from kidnappings, running into fire, leaping in front of bullets, jumping on grenades. I saw Orpheus and Eurydice. I saw Romeo and Juliet. I saw the souls everywhere. I saw the soul in a rhyme, in a black hole's weight on time, in the hands of a clock in two pieces of chalk, in the channels of a stereo, in the static of a radio, in electrons and in protons, in ages stone, iron and bronze, in a puppy and a bunny, in both real and in phony, in two men in the desert, in two women in a concert, in a laundry in a kitchen, in a couple with a pigeon, making bread or making honey, making love or making money, I watched them every time. It always ended the same. Because it's so easy to die for the person you love. It is so hard to live for them. I tell you, I watch the stars wink out before trying something scary together. I watch a love that could save anybody, but I see constant self-sacrifice. Knights die for princesses. Princesses drink poison for knights. Knights give up before fighting uncles. Princesses fail to go on without their knight. I tell you, this same story comes infinitely. And so you must know that for every person who hears this story, this recounting counts too. When I tell you now they die a billion times, they do. And when the next person hears this, they die a billion more. It's a great violence upon me for every person I must retell this tale to. So I don't want to be the universe anymore. I give them my gift. For my life space, they gain all memories of their past lives. For my lifetime, 
They get all the time in the universe together. I'm sorry you don't get me neatly summarizing this for you. Telling you the soul is in you too. Telling you if we go all the way back, they're actually, I don't know, Adam and Eve, something like that. I'm sorry there isn't a firm conclusion. You'll get to see how it ends, but I... I don't know truly how it will go. I know only what they need to do to succeed. And that at least I was kept alive by you watching this. For just a moment longer. Yes, I know. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.